What's up everyone, this is TechZect and in today's video we're gonna take a look at a refurbished product which is the HP EliteBook 840 G5. G5 means that it's the fifth generation and the newest one is G7. By the way, this is a mid-range business laptop, so let's begin. I got this laptop from Furbify to make a video about it, but uh, you need to know that I will tell my honest opinion. At Furbify refurbished means that it was fully tested, it was cleaned inside and outside, the malfunctioning hardware components were fixed or changed, and what's more, you get two years of warranty. Alright, let's talk about the product itself. Right off the bat, the design is solid, it's minimalist, it's made out of silver aluminium unibody with sharp ed edges, but I haven't really had any problem with that. On the top of the lid we can find the antenna and on the center we can find the HP logo, which is stylish and modern. By the way, I think it looks like lip. You can open the lid only with one hand, I think it's practical, I like that. The bottom has four rubber feet, which is helpful because the notebook won't gonna slide on the desk. This laptop is so massive and durable that it's gone through the military standard tests against vibration, shock, dust, humidity, extreme altitudes and many more. Let's hear how does it sound when it's being pushed. It doesn't make any sound at all. You may ask how heavy is it? It weighs one and a half kilograms uh, and if you want to imagine that it's like three times half liters of extra tasty really good beer. It's two centimeters thick from the surface of the desk because of its feet. I'm really happy with the design, with the build quality and the durability. Let's talk about the specs of this machine. It's got the Intel Core i5 8350 CPU, which is perfect for the everyday use, for example, watching movies, multitasking, photo editing or video editing. You can get this laptop with weaker and also with stronger CPU as well. It's got 8 gigs of RAM, but you can extend it to 32. This machine doesn't have a dedicated graphics card, but an Intel graphics UHD 620, which works well. I was even able to play Fortnite on the lowest graphics settings, and I was able to watch 4K 60 FPS videos on YouTube without any lag. If you want a version with dedicated graphics card, that's also possible. In terms of storage, there's a 256 gigs of NVMe SSD, which is faster than a classical SSD. You can replace it with a 1TB SSD. Let's move to the display. There's quite thick bezels on the top and on the bottom, but at least they are somewhat similar. So it's horizontally symmetric. Above the display we can find the infrared cameras for Windows Hello facial recognition, which works well. Then we've got the 720p webcam, which can be covered by the slider, and there are the noise cancelling microphones. And now I will show you the quality of the webcam. This is the quality of the webcam, and you can also hear the quality of the sound, and you can also see the quality of the video. So what do you think about it? Ciao. The display is a 14 inch 60 Hz Full HD one with IPS panel. That means that colors are vivid and the viewing angles are great too. Thanks to its resolution, pixel density is great and the brightness is cool also. Side note, avoid the display on the base model because that's not bright enough. This laptop is fairly designed for Photoshop work. In terms of video editing, for Full HD videos it works well. But I also try to edit 4K videos and it can get quite laggy sometimes. By the way, I used Premiere Pro for video editing. 
So if you want to edit 4K videos, I don't recommend this laptop. Still on the display. Fortunately, it doesn't use the PWM method when the brightness is lower. It's science time. What does PWM mean? They achieve lower brightness in a way that they turn off the backlighting for a short period of time and then turn it on again. This way they can achieve lower brightness and then they make it so quickly that you don't even recognize it, but it can cause eye fatigue. So they doesn't use the PWM method. The display is great. I stared at it for a long period of time without glasses and no problem at all. Now comes the sounding part. It's Bang & Olufsen, which is really precise and it gives us amazing quality and quantity. If you want, it can be really loud and it's even clear when it's on max capacity. It can easily fill a mid-sized room with music. I know it's not really effective to show how it sounds through a video, but I will try. The touchpad is really really pleasant to use. On the top of it you can find two buttons which are recommended to be used with the point stick in the center of the keyboard. I tried it, it works well, but I'm not a fan of it. By the way, the two buttons are not quite premium, but the touchpad is. You can also make a physical click on the touchpad, but I haven't used it much because despite it works well on the bottom of it, the higher you go, the harder it is to click on and on the top you can't even manage it. I'll show you. Anyways, I think it is meant to be used like this. I'm just mentioning that the MacBook's touchpad is also physically clickable and it doesn't matter where you want to make the click, it's perfect anywhere on it. In terms of using this touchpad with more than two fingers, it works well. It's also worth mentioning that if you want to highlight a text and you are near the end of the touchpad, you just leave your finger there and it keeps highlighting the text. One thing which is a surprise that you can zoom in and out uh, in Chrome, Edge or Firefox and it doesn't use the browser's zoom but something else. It works like on Mac computers and you can even go forward and backward in the browser with a two finger gesture like on Mac computers. I really like it because it makes the experience more pleasing and better. Some words about the keyboard too. Sadly it's not a backlit keyboard but there are versions with that feature too. The up and down arrow keys are a little, little bit hard to press because they are narrow, especially if you have thick fingers. Be aware that there is no insert button on this keyboard, so if you want to achieve that functionality, you should press Fn plus E. By the way, typing on this keyboard is good. It's not really really pleasant to me, but it's not bad either. In my opinion, it's a little bit difficult to press the keys, but maybe it's just me. It can be perfect for other people. Let's hear a sound test. The non-removable battery is a 50 watt hour one, which is enough for approximately three and a half hours on a better performance settings, or for approximately four hours on better battery settings. In both cases, I was 
listening to music, doing a bunch of stuff, installing something, and so on. A new battery could definitely last longer. As a reminder, this is a refurbished product, so the battery cannot perform as a brand new. In terms of charging, to go from 8% to 100%, it took one and a half hours while I was working on a machine. If we take a look at the ports, it's really generous, but it's lacking the SD card reader. Other than that, it's almost got everything. On the left, we can find the Kensington lock slot, the fan, which is good for right-handed people, because uh, it's not blowing hot air to your arm. There's a 3.0 type A USB port and a smart card reader. The right side features a micro SIM slot, a combined microphone and headphones input, a USB 3.0 type A port, an HDMI port and an Ethernet port, which is really easy to put the cable in, but it's hard to pull it off, but I'm gonna show how to do it. What's left? The dock connector, the USB Type-C with Thunderbolt, which you can also use to charge the notebook, and last but not least, the power supply, which is on the right side. For me, it's better if it's on the left side, but maybe you have your power socket on the right. It's a little bit bad that the HDMI and the Ethernet ports are on the right, because if you are right-handed and you want to use a mouse, then you will have a hard time. I'd like to mention some words about the sound of the fan. When I used the laptop on a battery, the fan was really quiet, but when I used it plugged in, it, it had some kind of a weird noise. But let's listen to it. What about the heat of the machine? When I did some heavy performance activities, only some spots were lukewarm. I tried to make the fingerprint sensor work, but I didn't succeed. I downloaded drivers, I even updated the BIOS, but I wasn't successful. Maybe I tried a bad driver or something. Last but not least, the price. This machine costs around 700 euros, and if you want to buy a brand new, which is the G7, then it's gonna cost you 1150 euros. Alright, that's been it. I hope it was useful. If you liked the video, hit the like button. And also don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye!